Hey, I'm Charting Man Dan, trader and technical analyst with the Chart Guys. In this video, we're going to check in on the broader markets. The cannabis sector gets a news pop. We'll see if that's enough to wake up the bulls who have been hibernating for years. NVDA all-time high test and more. Let's look at the charts. All right, so the S&P 500 and NASDAQ bulls kept control today for a bit higher of a climb. We know every move higher that we see from here increases the probability of a monthly bull flag and decreases the probability of a confirmed weekly downtrend. Both are absolutely still on the table, but we have to say that it is impressive that the bulls have recovered. At this point, we're looking at a 65% plus retracement, which is also creating space for the potential where even if we do reject initially, it's possible to then hold the low and just tighten up a bit. And the NASDAQ, same deal. Daily following through a bit. There's a little quick battle on the morning and there was a lack of anybody taking control. We had the bears attempt to confirm a little two minute downtrend and they failed. Bulls took over. They didn't confirm a five minute uptrend. They just went straight off the low of the day, gave it all back. Bears never confirmed a five minute downtrend. And it took until, you know, an hour and 30 minutes almost into the morning before we had the first uptrend confirmed. The bulls then kept control for a couple of hours and ended the day still in the hourly uptrend. So the hourly uptrend is our guide. The bulls have complete control as long as that is intact. When we lose the hourly uptrends, we will zoom out and there's now a lot of space for a daily higher low to try and form next consolidation. The next daily consolidation that we see from here is going to give us a lot of information in terms of the retracement size. Do we pull back for a healthy quick higher low or do we give back more than half of the move that we just saw? That's going to significantly dictate what we're looking for in the short term. So we're watching for daily consolidation in the short term, and then we're going to gauge what does that consolidation look like. So headline in MSOS, the cannabis sector. So headline is the health, or what is it? Health and Human Services uh, recommended to the DEA to go to Schedule 3 from Schedule 1. If that happens, it will be a major catalyst for the sector for a number of reasons. There will be tax benefits for the companies. They'll be able to uplist onto higher exchanges with better liquidity and more trading opportunity for those interested in these names. And we know that these names are, this is literally the weakest sector in the market. There's nothing weaker than cannabis in the last couple of years. And so the question is, can we put in a bottom? Now we have to take into account that this headline doesn't change anything now. This is, hey, a recommendation. The DEA still has to make the decision. That decision could be four months from now. It could be eight months from now. They could save it to the election and it could be a year from now. So we have to keep that in mind. But what could potentially shift things is the sentiment where bears have been as comfortable as they can possibly be. But on this news, we had a 30% straight up move with multiple halts. And so bears have to start looking at this and saying, okay, risk and reward from these levels. If this headline drops, you know, we're going to go up 50% plus in this name if it becomes official. And that's a conservative amount, considering this was 30% on just, you know, the recommendation. Anyways, what I care about is volume and price action. The volume is there. It is notable. This was a very high volume day. In terms of dollar amount, it was one of the top, probably the top five highest dollar volume days that we've ever had. Maybe top 10. Either way, it was a lot. And that's been standing out. I made a comment on Monday. People obviously knew about this. I made a comment on Monday. I'm surprised with the summer, with summer just being generally slower trading and full bear control of the sector that MSOS is still putting up roughly $10 million a day. I would have expected it to fade more. And so I say that on Monday, Tuesday, we get high volume and then Wednesday, the news drops. Okay, makes sense. So... Look at this rejection from resistance. The bears are still playing defense. I mean, 650. We hit a, we halted and then gapped and halted and then gapped and then halted and opened lower. And that was the indication the pop is done. And so I've been trading this in both directions. And I know a lot of people get annoyed that I trade this sector bearish. I'm here to make money. That's why I'm a trader. That's what I care about. It'd be nice if we get advancements for all the, the real world reasons in cannabis, but the numbers on the flashing screen are for profiting. So I'm going to trade it long and short, which is what I did today. I shorted at 620, covered it 
590, 570. I longed at 559, flip there, and I'm going to trade it in both directions. If that bothers you, that's your problem. So MSOS 650 must break. That's the highest level that we've seen in five months. If we do not break 650, we're not making any longer term changes here. The hourly chart has a key support now down at 560. Actually, let's just go to the exact level. 557 is a key level for me. That is where the bulls played defense today. Defended it, defended it, defended it. Need to hold that level tomorrow. If we break 557 tomorrow, it's going to be here we go again. We need to see the media machine get on top of this. We need CNBC to be talking about it. We need Reddit to be talking about it if it's going to gain interest and follow through. We've seen this before many times, the pop and fade. We pop and fade, pop and give it back. So we have to see the pop and continuation to put pressure on bears. There are bears that shorted above $6 today that are very comfortable. You've got to break $6.50 to make them very uncomfortable. The cannabis names in Canada are much weaker still. CGC, get over 53 cents and we can talk about a shift. TLRY responded with the pop-up. Get over 308 and we can talk about the longer term shift. A break of 308 would be confirming a weekly uptrend and getting us to the highest levels that we've seen almost all year. That would be significant. Pretty much all I'm watching in this sector is MSOS, TLRY, and TSNDF. TSNDF is the strongest U.S. chart, but you've got to be aware that it is very low liquidity and very low volume. Its average volume is like $300,000 traded a day. Today, it was much more. It was $2 million, but we got to the highest level that we've seen all year, and no other U.S. cannabis name that I watch out of the major ones can even come close to saying that. So I'm going to continue to monitor the sector. Again, I plan on making a good bit of money in this sector when we get the right momentum and catalysts. This is the initial push towards that legitimate federal catalyst, but it's still not official. It's still just probabilities. Right now, this is pricing in probabilities that it's more likely today than it was yesterday that we're going to see cannabis rescheduled perhaps before the next election. One thing that I keep thinking, you know, if I'm the administration, I want to keep that news, you know, until it's relevant and fresh on the minds of the election. And that's 14 months away. So long way to go. And also just a side note, psychedelic name, CMPS, again, very low volume, low liquidity. Keep an eye on it. We have a year long tightening weekly range that is going to break before the end of this year. And we've got a tightening daily range that is going to break within the next week or so. So tightening on all kinds of time frames and low liquidity means if this breaks bull, we can very quickly see you know, a 40% move. Semiconductors testing the recent highs to try and confirm the daily uptrend. If we reject from 156.59, it's a lower high. We're gonna battle that level tomorrow. The hourly uptrend is our guide, hourly high or low, trying to be set here at 154.94. Tomorrow, if we break 154.94, first thing, that will increase probabilities of a daily lower high shaping up. NVDA was a lead bull today. And then in the afternoon, there was a bearish headline that shifted the correlation. And the headline was, Biden says NVDA can't sell to the Middle East or something like that. And so then we shifted into relative weakness. And so what I'm watching for NVDA, the bears are going to defend 500. They did today. Is this a daily lower high being set? If it is, we're going to look for the all-time high. Come on. All-time high support. Is this a lower high? If we break 484 tomorrow, the daily lower high is set, and we then scout a higher low sometime in the next day or two. And so the burdens on bears tomorrow to get that daily consolidation underway and defend $500 resistance. But as I keep saying, there is nothing wrong with this chart overall. We can absolutely hit new all-time highs and keep this move going unless the bears give us a reason that that can't be the case and they're not doing that. And remember I talked about how, yeah, gap up open and a bunch of profit taking. Remember when Apple did it? Apple did it when they had their event back here. 
We pulled back, we set the daily higher low, and kept running into all-time highs. Apple is definitely a lead bull after confirming the daily uptrend, big follow-through, we're in the gap fill. And there's a lot of big NASDAQ names that don't have the daily uptrend yet. We know the NASDAQ does, we know Apple does. Microsoft doesn't have one yet. Amazon doesn't have one yet. We've got to break the highs of Thursday. Netflix broke the high of Thursday today. Who else? There's one more. Google broke. Meta. Meta is right there. <clears throat> but failing. So if I'm a bear, I want to see all of these names fail to break the high of Thursday to lead to daily consolidation in the NASDAQ. If I'm a bull, I'm saying, hey, the NASDAQ looks great and these names aren't even breaking their resistance yet. If they break their resistance and follow along, it's going to be further upside fuel. Tesla, nice recovery today. A lot of uh, morning weakness. Five-minute oversold bounce led to a higher high there. So continuing to grind higher. New hourly support is the low of today. And when we lose the hourly uptrend, we'll watch for a daily higher low to form. But keeping control at the moment. Healthcare saw a nice morning follow through, but gave it back, shaping up the potential for daily consolidation. Hourly downtrend confirmed into the end of the day. And again, watching the tightening weekly range. That's all I care about. The only levels I care about are 136.53, 136.85 behind it, and 132.42 support. If we're not breaking this weekly range, nothing is changing. And we are going to break this weekly range in September. And that's going to have significant implications as far as being a major clue for the S&P 500. Financial sector, followed through on the morning, gave it back. Gap fill, 34.69. And we know we're going to look for a weekly lower high eventually. The next daily consolidation retracement size is going to give us information to help us determine probabilities as to whether or not weekly lower highs are shaping up. IWM with a little bit of follow through, same deal. Keeping in mind, IWM is not a daily uptrend right now. We confirmed a daily bear flag with zero follow through, but we still don't have a clear daily higher low and higher high. So if this weekly bounce is going to be significant, that will have to happen eventually after next consolidation. AMC, little trade review here. So point number one, write things down. Yesterday, I thought, I want to scout AMC for a daily bounce. We're getting extreme. I like oversold bounces. And I didn't write it down. And I'm watching 50, 50 other things and forgot. And so we held the low of yesterday by one penny. And then we ripped higher by almost 30%, 25%. And so that's a missed opportunity. So I could cry about it. Or I could look for the top. And so Lori made a post in the chat room. Trading is a team game. I was not watching AMC for a couple hours. I see her post and I say, I'm going to check out AMC. And I see, I look just right at the right time. That looks like a five minute volume climax to me. And then I say top fishing. And what I mean by top fishing is saying, all right, if this is a five minute volume climax, then we're going to confirm a one minute downtrend into five minute consolidation. So I see this pullback and I short this one minute lower high. And I enter my short. I think it was 1347 is where I got filled. If I'm wrong, I lose 20 cents with a stop out above the high. If I'm right, there is the potential for over a dollar. So that is, you know, three to one, four to one, five to one, risk reward, reward to risk. So after the one minute, I was just taking profit. You know, my target was five minute EMA 12 for some of the position. So I exited half really quickly to be risk free, stop over the high. I exit more at five minute EMA 12. I exit more on this move down. And then I started to focus on cannabis. So I just exited the rest of my position. I forget exactly where I did miss the final legs down, but uh, cannabis sector obviously had a lot of opportunity there. But again, it's key takeaways, write stuff down, lesson for myself and trading's a team game. I made money today on AMC because Lori made a post about it. She didn't say anything about a trade, you know, look short here or anything like that. She got my eyes on it. And then I used my skill set to then develop a trade game plan based on what I was seeing. Crypto stocks, daily inside bars, not much going on today. So I'm viewing this on Riot as a high, hourly high or low. 
And anything under 12.55 is an hourly lower high for me. And MARA, same deal. So we bounced off the low, 12.47, solid bounce. I mean, a bunch of percent here, but it's all about 13.87 from here. Nice climb into the end of the day for MARA. And Riot was a five minute inverse head and shoulders. That was an indication that the hourly higher low was forming. And we'll see what Bitcoin does. Bitcoin definitely pulled back more than the bulls wanted to see. But we'll see how these inside bars break tomorrow. ARKK, growth names continuing to climb higher. Hourly uptrend is our guide. Uranium, CCJ, new 16-year highs. Just grinding up the daily uptrend. Keep an eye on uranium names. There's a bunch of names that are just now trying to catch up. UUUU is a small low cap name, but 10% bounce from a few days ago. Highest level in a bunch of months. Uranium names are definitely on the menu. And again, I just keep going back to the CCJ monthly equilibrium. Find long-term tightening ranges and wait for them to break. That's why I'm watching CMPS weekly time frame, a year in the making. CCJ had a pattern over a year in the making. The monthly broke bullet, 29.73, and we're now up over 20% from there. The dollar. Weekly consolidation is official. We broke the low of last week, 103. We confirm the four-hour downtrend with a bear flag. Next step for the bears, if this weekly consolidation is going to follow through, is confirm a daily downtrend with a lower high and lower low as the result of the next bounce. The retracement size on this weekly consolidation is going to have a significant impact in how I view markets, crypto, metals, stocks. If it is healthy 382 retracement and we confirm the first weekly uptrend of the year, that's bearish, all those things I just said. If we pull back 50% retracement, that's bullish, all the things that I just said. The dollar is going to be critical for September. Oil, daily resistance of 81.75 broke. Weekly bull flag continues to try and shape up. I do still want to see a more clear daily uptrend confirmed, but bulls are very pleased with how the longer term consolidation has gone to this point. And natural gas doing it again. Falling wedge, hit the support, straight up, no trend change. Hit support, straight up, no trend change. Hit support, straight up, no trend change. Can we make it all the way up above three with no daily trend change? We'll see. I like trend changes in my trading. That's why I don't like natural gas. I need these trends to establish my trade game plans around. And if we're just going to knee jerk, very beautiful yellow bird just hovered right in my face. I don't know what I was saying. I need trend changes. All right. I don't have any videos. That would have been a good one. Uh, make sure and check out the bag holding webinar that we did from yesterday. That's on our YouTube channel. Lamont's going to have a live Ask Me Anything tomorrow, Thursday, 5 p.m. Eastern. And don't forget to do good things.